name is Piero Buratti. I'm working in APG for uh, Automotive Product Group, and I will give you some uh, elements about uh, the, fa the safety approach we are uh, working on. So, functional safety is part of the uh, overall safety approach of uh, the uh, application you are developing. And the objective of the functional safety, especially in automotive market, is to avoid injury of people. The standard ISO 26262 is uh, the standard that is uh, regulating uh, the approach uh, the developer needs to follow to reach uh, an acceptable level of safety. We have uh, three main uh, elements uh, that are safety detractor, that are soft error, fault uh, error and uh, uh, common errors. We will see one by one. Soft error is, a, is a, an error where a single bit value is wrong typically is uh, uh, related to memory units uh, and is uh, generated by radiation uh, uh, that they are uh, caused by package decay that produces some uh, alpha uh, that will eat the silicon and uh, another possibility are cosmic rays that can eat the silicon. This can cause the change of the status of a single bit that can be a flip-flop or a flash or RAM memory cell. We have a very big experience on this because we are part of a laboratory we have in the Alps and between French and Italy. And there is 1,700 meter rocks over and we are working there since here to examine the effect of these soft errors. Latent faults. Latent faults is a very difficult element to be discovered because there are faults that nobody knows yet never occurred. Maybe a new application can highlight a fault, but at the moment, the best we did, we don't find this fault, but we need to take care of them. Common errors. All the policy we will introduce to solve soft error and latent errors will introduce common errors. Because generally speaking, we will see later on, uh, we replicate, duplicate the elements to have a redundance. Having redundance may be that we can have two elements making the same error. So we have a false positive, and this is a common error. In the past, we were used to have a main MCU and a monitor MCU. What we did is to have two microcontroller cores inside the unique device so we can make a monitor and uh, activity on the same device. This requires a dual core lockstep mode approach. This uh, device that we are uh, introducing today is the Leopard and this Leopard has been certified by a third party that is Exida. So we have uh, introduced to them what is our architectural choice. They have certified that they are compliant to the standard. We implement the device, they analyze the implementation and say, okay, are conformed to the uh, architecture already approved. So here is a block diagram, simplified block diagram of what the Leopard is. You can see highlighted the two cores, the two crossbar and so on. That is our redundancy sphere. This help to have uh, the same operation done on uh, two different modules and to compare. The uh, element we have introduced here to avoid a common error is this one. Each replicated channel is uh, physically implemented in a different way. So, in reality, the two cores are not so close, are as much as possible distant inside the, the device. The behavioral code is the same, but the synthesis mapping has been done using different uh, rules and libraries, so we have a different physical implementation. Then the outer worked to isolate the two cores inside the silicon, avoiding to have signal crossing them to uh, exclude the possibility of uh, crosstalk. Another important approach is the logical memory beast. 
every time uh, we switch on uh, the device, uh, a self-test is performed on uh, the full logic and memory, and the result is given. As much as we can uh, run this test, uh, we are uh, safer. So we have decided to implement uh, the uh, logic beast not only on power on, but also at uh, power off. We have protected the, fl the flash and the RAM with the, the uh, SEC traditional approach. And we have replicated uh, many control elements, such as uh, the uh, temperature sensor, the voltage de failure detection, the clock failure detection. And we have taken all this stuff together to communicate with the FCCCU, that is the default collection and control unit. This uh, unit is programmable, so you can uh, instruct it uh, to do already something for you. So it, it depends uh, of uh, the fault the receiver can react autonomously, for example, can reset the device. In any case, uh, we'll communicate with the uh, outside uh, to give information to the system of what the fault has been detected. Then we have uh, a CRC unit. The CRC unit is used to have uh, a signature on uh, every serial communication channel we have. So all the peripherals here that you can see in uh, light yellow, uh, CAN, uh, LIN, uh, FLEXRAY and so on, have always a CRC signature so you can uh, verify if the, the data transmitted is correct or not. So thanks to the experience we did in our lab, we have developed a specific class of flip-flop and that are insensitive to alpha and cosmic radiation. And we have used this to harden the structure of our device. What we have today is the SPC56 family, 32-bit microcontroller that is in full production and will stay there. And uh, all our devices are ASIL B compliant, that is uh, a less important level. And the Leopard, the one I show you the block diagram, is ASIL D certified. In the future, 2016 uh, over, all our devices will be ASIL D certified. So we move uh, from an a pioneer to a strategic approach to grant SLD for all our products. Unless uh, you have a question, I'm finished and if you want to see some more detail about our products and tool chain, we have a tripod just here on the left. Thank you.